So, the big news this morning, <clears throat> Labour set to outline plans to reform the NHS, as it reveals via West Treating. Billions of pounds of taxpayers' money is misspent. Yes, is misspent, say the Labour Party. Uh, the party is highlighting £10 <clears throat> billion pounds of spending as examples of way in which the government, they say, is wasting money or spending it in the wrong places. We're now delighted to be joined by Shadow Health Minister Karen Smith. Karen, good morning. I know you're stepping in for West Streeting, sadly ill this morning. Thank you for giving us your time. Um, I believe this is a seismic shift, and I'd, I'd like your direct response to this. Hear me out. I have heard the Labour Party for years and years say, we need more money in the NHS. Yes, it's changed, it's not fit for purpose, and it's an older generational problem with people. But this is the first time... You talk about planting your tanks on Tory lawns. You're bashing down the front door. This is West Streeting prepared to take on unions, take on the bureaucrats and say, the money we give to the NHS isn't being spent correctly and that's a Labour politician saying that? That's a big change, Karen, by anybody's standards. Well, we have been saying that for some time because we know that money is tight. We know that we are asking people to spend more and more of their hard-earned wealth on our public services. And where it's not working, we are unafraid to say so. So, for example, we've got £200 million spent still on paper in the system. But we don't just want to talk about it in terms of that huge figure um, of, of, of waste. What we want to highlight is the need to reform the system to make it more efficient for patients in ways that we all recognise. So, for example, those outpatient appointments that one in five people don't even know they've had because they haven't got the letter telling them about it. So the focus, I think, people in the service will also want to come with us in terms of reforming that system to make it fit for the 21st century. So, yes, we're very firm about that, but we will work with the system to make that happen, because in some places it does happen. It does happen in some places that hospitals use text messaging, for example, to let people know about appointments, and those appointments are reduced by half. What have you done to sort of analyse where the wastage is of the spending to say, OK, we've got a grasp of where the budget's going, where it's being <clears> sent. <throat> that clearly is an area where we can save the money. Well, we are working very hard on opposition in talking with um, the uh, people in the front line um, and those leaders of the health systems to understand where the system is functioning, where it could function better, looking at systems that do function better and are using more modern technology that most of us expect. Every time we purchase something these days, we can track where it is in the system. People expect to be able to do that when they go into the NHS and not sort of disappear down this black hole after the GP referral. So working with those leaders and through freedom of information requests and those usual sorts of analysis, we have been able to identify this level of potential uh, savings and reuse of that money inside the system. Karen, I was going to ask Wes this, and I'd love your opinion. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what it was, an exact number, 683,000, I think, appointments missed last year, which is utterly, utterly appalling. How would you deal with that? Again, lots of those appointments are missed because patients don't even know they've got an appointment. Or patients have to try and cancel appointment, but they can't get through on a phone system in order to do so. So that's often why appointments are missed. And where people have done, for example, fairly now old-fashioned text messaging, those appointments have been, missed appointments have been reduced by half. So we want to go with the best. We want to use the systems and the hospitals and the uh, primary care, the GP services that work the best in order to roll that out more widely because that's one of the things that doesn't happen as well as it should do in the NHS so that we bring them all up to that standard. That we, we as patients and the public, frankly, expect these days, don't we? We expect to get that message on our phones or even by uh, an do you, email do you to know where we are in the system. Do you expect to kick back from, from the unions? As I started this by saying this was <clears throat> massively different in my mind from, from the, the Labour Party of the past, and that's what Keir Starmer's done in the last four years. Do you expect no, there to be kickback from think... unions who maybe be looking for more money? Or the hospitals themselves will be expecting Labour to have an open chequebook? It's a different approach, Karen, isn't it? I think, um, I mean, we do have a different approach under Keir Starmer and, and our offer to the electorate. Of course we do, because we've lost elections in the past because we haven't been able to gain that trust of the British public. So we are very focused on reform of the NHS, but we will do that working with the front line and with the trade unions. When, when you've got experienced nurses and doctors 
in our health system, having to spend a lot of time running around trying to print off letters um, and get them stuck in the post, and having those appointments where patients don't turn up, that's really frustrating for the front line. So I think they will be very willing to work with us. Much of the information that we are getting about the waste in the system comes from those very people that want to make the system better. No one likes working in that system, so we think that's a way that we can work cooperatively with people. Uh, we'd like to move on, Karen, just to some other stories. Of course, we woke up this morning to the news that the UK, with the US, have launched fresh strikes, joint airstrikes uh, against Houthi targets in Yemen. Can you tell us, was Keir Starmer told about that in advance? No, um, we weren't briefed in advance about that. Um, we would expect to be, and we would certainly expect the Prime Minister today to come and make a full statement to Parliament. I think it's appropriate that we took that course of action with the US. Well, we would need to um, understand the, the, the rationale um, and ideally the legal advice that the government has had on that. That's why we would normally be expected to be briefed on the usual terms and for the Prime Minister to make a full statement to Parliament. We so, supported the first strikes on that basis, so that's what we would expect to happen. And as, par as the day unfolds, we would expect that statement to be made in full to Parliament today. So Sir Keir Starmer, rightly angry that Sunak hasn't briefed him as he's... I don't know whether he's constitutionally supposed to, is he, Karen? But for you guys, a misstep last night by Sunak. Well, it's a very, it's a very serious step, obviously, um, and um, we would expect that to happen. Um, it's, it's, it's about um, our representation to the public, and so the country understands when action like this is taken by the prime minister. That's why it is usual to work with the opposition on these issues. So we would hope that that would unfold today. And you know, so w what will be the Labour Party's stance today if that doesn't come to clarity? Well, that's why we would expect to be briefed on the usual terms um, in order to understand the action, the advice that the government has had um, before making any further comment on that. That would be... Um, that's the responsible thing to do. OK, we, we um, want to wait for there's the two other stories... Two other stories in the papers today um, that, that, that lots of people are interested in. But just very quickly, Rwanda last night, Richie Sunak suffering his first defeat in the Lord's Karen about the Rwanda bill. We've all got opinions about Rwanda. I asked Mike Buckley, a former Labour advisor, exactly what I'll ask you. I suspect the Labour Party quite pleased this morning that the Lords blocked uh, a piece of legislation that they believe is wrong. And I'm not on either side here, but I didn't think the Labour Party supported the very existence of the House of Lords. So that's slightly ironic, isn't it? Well, the bill, the, the amendment that was at the Lords last night um, was um, really quite a straightforward one that basically enacted what the government said it wanted to do with regard to the various safeguards on Rwanda. So I think um, colleagues, it's a cross-party um, amendment in the Lords last night, so I think colleagues in the House of Lords on all sides, all parties, um, be slightly um, uh, unexpected really that the government didn't simply say, yes, we've already said those safeguards in place, we're going to accept that amendment. So why the government didn't simply do that um, is a bit of a mystery to us, um, because it essentially does what they said they wanted to do. Now, whether the government is trying to make an issue of that, I'll, I'll leave that to, to listeners to um, make their own minds up. Okay. We'll dissect that a little bit more uh, in a few minutes' time. Karen, last thing I want to ask you about, uh, potentially really exciting news in terms of early detection of Alzheimer's. We're hearing that there's a, a blood test that's being used in, in Sweden. What do you know about it? How much of a big step could this be in how we treat this awful disease? It's really exciting, isn't it? Um, and it's such a horrible disease for people to be living with. So these developments are really exciting. We know that new drugs are coming down the down the line. Our life science sector in this country is so fantastic and we really want to make sure we support that. My, my concern would be the government's ability to deliver that to the front line. Uh, and that's like today we're talking about these outpatient appointments, getting people uh, to, to, into the system and making sure the government can roll that out because the problem we have with them is that they can't deliver things to the front line because they have broken that system. So great to hear this coming up the line. Of course we want to make sure that happens but that's why we want to reform that outpatient system and the NHS system so that that brilliant innovation can be delivered to patients as quickly as possible because we're all desperate to see it happen. Mm. Karen Smith, thank you so much for thank your you, time Karen. this morning. Really uh, good.